Greetings. I'm Reverend John O'Toole and I'd like to show you a how-to video on how to use your point-and-shoot camera. Now I know most people out there are using a smartphone to take their pictures, but I bet somewhere in your closet, in your drawer, stuffed away someplace, is one of these point-and-shoots. And you take pictures with it and they don't come out all that great. This one here is the Canon Power Shot, and it's the uh, it's the uh, Delphi um, 160. I've had this for a number of years, and uh, you know what's nice about it is it comes in this little pouch. I could stick it in my cargo pants shorts, but you could put it in your purse or your backpack or whatever. And, uh, and the other thing is it has this little belt loop on the side. I don't use the belt loop for a belt. I use it to store the second battery. So if the battery goes dead while I'm out some about, it, I, can, uh, I can swap batteries pretty quick. So, you know, I, of course I have a full DSL camera. But it's bulky. This one here I can carry in my pocket. And uh, yeah, I know, I carry a smartphone in my pocket too. But you know, there's something nice about taking pictures with a camera. So, sometimes you're taking pictures and they don't come out very good. So what we like to do is you could actually go into your features. Like, for example, right now, I'm in program mode. You can see the P. There's a P there. And you can, uh, you can go into program mode. And when you go into program mode, you can change your settings for other, for other options. So this is actually really kind of a cool thing because program mode, it has a bunch of these cool features in it. And you just sit there and you play around with them. Like you have uh, white balance. You have the ISO speed. The ISO speed is how much noise you're going to have in your picture. Now in the old days when we had film, it was the grain. The higher the number, the more grain, but the more sensitive to light the one it was. So, you could raise up the ISO rating, and then it'll be more sensitive to shoot fit pictures without uh, a flash, which usually, if you, unless you're shooting a subject that's up close, the flash on the built-in camera isn't going to get very far, and it's just going to light up the foreground and not what you're really trying to light up. So, you can raise this up to 1600, but you're going to get a lot of noise at 1600. Which is, it's going to look very grainy. So probably the highest you really want to go on the average is maybe 400. And then, other things you can do is you can change you know, this is in program mode. You can change things like what kind of shoot you're doing. Like I changed the focus range to uh, out to Lance to infinity, so it's always staying in infinity mode. So often I'll shoot from the car, and actually from a transport or whatever. But if there's any dirt on the window, it's going to focus on that dirt on the window and not the background. So if you set your in focus, automatic focus to infinity, then it will just take the picture as if it's that. If say you're taking pictures of sports or action, you can go in and tell it that you're taking pictures of action and it'll increase the shutter speed so it's faster. And then you can go later you know, so you go into these things and you can play around with uh, like the recording pixels, and that's you know how how much 
how, how many pixels that gives you a better image. So a lower number is going to give you uh, more pictures per um, per card. And in the old days, when we had eight mega or or gigs or eight gigs of cards, then you were concerned about that. But now what you really want to do is you want to record at the highest number possible, and then you can always downsize it in editing. And then the other things you can change is for video. Now this is a 720 camera, which means the high the film speed is at 720. That's the highest it can go. But you can get 1080 cameras and you can get 4K cameras. But as you do that, the price goes up. But you know, a simple 1080, a 720 isn't so bad. Although you'll lose some detail if you raise, if you if you export it as a 1080 video. So you can sit there and just kind of poke around in these in these uh, there's a self timer in it. Now I don't know about smartphones whether they have a self timer, but considering all the bathroom pictures I see of selfies, I would imagine either it's hidden somewhere or it doesn't have one. And even those that I know that are sophisticated picture takers don't actually use the uh, self-timer, so I'm imagining that it doesn't exist. And so that's, it's pretty simple. You could pull out the book. The easiest thing to do is look up on YouTube your camera and say, you can say, how to operate a Canon PowerShot Delphi 160. Now, of course, the 160s, I don't even know if you can still buy them. You might still be able to buy them and they refurbished. But it's been around a long time, but it's a very true camera. It's a very reliable point and shoot. So even if you bought one now that's been refurbished, it's still going to give you some good life to it. You know, there are other things, like you can go to auto and just let it do everything you want for it. But most people are unhappy with auto. Now, aperture priority, if you have the setting for an aperture priority, what you can do is that will give you more depth of field. When you take pictures with a smartphone, often the pictures are flat. The sensor is bitty bitty. This lens is even more bitty bitty. And there's no depth of field. It has to interpret depth of field. And it doesn't do a good job. Like say you take a picture of like a big flower arrangement hanging from a pole and you get up there and you take a picture of it and your feet are in the thing. Well your feet look like they're bitty bitty where the flowers are huge. And the reason for that is is because there's no depth of field. Otherwise your feet would look normal in the picture. <clears throat> or you can't tell distances between subjects that are different distances from apart. You have a person here and a person there and a person behind there and you take a picture of all three subjects, they all look like they're standing right next to each other, unless, except that they really are ten feet apart from each other. <clears throat> so that's how you can explore your features on your point and shoot. And if you tweak things around a little bit, you might find that the pictures you take all the time come out really better. Now I'm often, you know, in a transport, I, I've shared, um, sometimes go on to a doctor's appointments and I just look and I see and I take the picture and I don't have time for framing, I don't take hop for stop, stop for a second so I can take this picture I have to kind of time it and take the picture so the more features you can set up ahead of time you can get really good photographs with the right timing you can turn on and off the display. Um, you know, the point and shoots use the rear display as foes as a viewfinder. So that's what you have to use to, to do it. And then there's also, um, you've got a menu button that you can go through and you can set things up, like set up your time, of course. 
um, and your time zone. So when you take the picture, you have a cho option of whether to have that date printed on your uh, your your picture. Now that's it's a useful function unless you down the road you wish to use those pictures for something else. You've got to go in and remove that um, through Photoshop or some other um, editing function. So you got your volumes. They even have hints and tips if you wanted to know about how to use certain features. And hey, that red eye. Um, correction. Now, a red eye shows up is when the flash. <coughs> um, I guess there's a little hole here. That's where the. Oh no, the flash is right here. Flash on the camera is right here. Some of them pop up. So it's because the flash is too close to the lens, and what it does is it shoots off and hits the eyeball and it hits the back of the retina and it comes back as a red dot. So that's where you get those Satan pictures. So it has a feature in here that's going to try to correct the red eye. And then, you know, there's another one here about how long you have the uh, display on while you um, take the picture. So if you want to check it afterwards, you know, you have, you know, two seconds or four seconds to uh, to view it before it goes on to do the next picture. So date stamp is in here, and that's where you're going to either have it print on the on the menu on the picture or not. So it's just you just sit there and poke through the thing. It's, you know, the best thing to do is to try one setting, take some pictures, and then go back and try another setting and take some pictures. That's the best way to go about doing it. And then figure out what it is that you like the most. Like right now, it's sitting there bouncing around between macro and... Uh, because all my fooling around here has taken it out of program mode. But I like to get back to program mode and then go and adjust it for make sure it's the focus range is on infinity. And then well, that's when I take pictures out the window and it, and actually, I just made this change a little while ago, and it makes a huge difference in the picture quality because you don't you get less blurring, you know. Now, this point and shoot has a delay when time to hit your button to the time it takes the picture, which means nothing if you're standing still taking a framed picture. But if you're in a moving vehicle and you're trying to take a picture of this really cool thing, you have to anticipate when it's coming up and hit the button to have it timed correctly. Now there are, that's something to look at when you're shopping for a camera is how fast does the picture take when you take your picture. And it may seem like you know not much but you know the difference between that and the DSLR is, is DSLR is very fast although the DSLR has, will have the auto focus that takes a little longer for it to, to take your picture. Whereas this one here um, is, is different. It's the same with the smartphone. It's, the autofocus is minuscule because everything is flat. And it's pretty much preset unless you zoom in and stuff like that. So I hope you got a little something out of this little quick video on how to use a point and shoot. And I think if you drag it out of your closet or your drawer you power up, you charge up those batteries and start using it again. You might find yourself really loving photography and there's nothing like it. My first camera was a Kodak Hawkeye box camera. You had no, no features. Click. Crank the film. Click. Crank the film. <laughs>
but you had 620 film. It was big. It was a big frame. They still do the 120, but you know, it's an amazing thing to take pictures and put things on film. Whereas now it's images. You can still do film. We are all into the instant gratification. So until next time, sending you peace, sending you happiness, sending you joy.